Hey folks, I'm Aslin Bloor from AZ Entertainment and I'm in the kitchen for another episode of Simply Singapore. We are going to talk Eurasian food, Eurasian culture and Eurasian tradition today. And I've got joining me on the panel some wonderful friends from all over the world. So we'll quickly go say hello to them uh, before we get back into the kitchen. Right, from my left, you all know Conjurer Penerjee. Here I am. It's morning again in Sydney. It's 6 a.m. And um, I'm up and I'm ready to watch some fabulous cooking. And um, Aslan will tell you at the end of the show we're going to do my show later this month because it falls on her birthday and we can't have that. And we so, love her. Um, no. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, it's always morning in Australia. One of these days we'll have to do a show where it's evening in Australia and morning over here. <laughs> We, we, we never sleep. We'll have to do that. Anyway, now I'm going to go over to Perry. You've met Perry once before, and uh, Perry's going to be cooking for us next week, so let's say hello to her. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be back here, and I'm, I'm a little nervous about cooking next week because it's my first live show, so let's see how that goes. Just be patient with me. <laughs> You'll be good. You'll be fine. And now we have... Uh, 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 NAZ Entertainment newbie. So we've got Chef Michael Thomas. Hi, Mark. Hi, Chef. Hi, how are you guys today? We're all very well, thank you. And you? I'm good. Uh, we just got eight inches of snow and it's still coming down, so I don't know what to expect from here. Well, it's, it's, good. it's good to have you. It's good to have you joining us, um, Michael. Thank you. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Cool. Everywhere, it's snowing everywhere, but in the UK, we just get rain. So right, today, back to the recipe. Um, we're going to be cooking a Eurasian dish. Now, if you've been following Simply Singapore, it's been going on for over a year now. If you've been following this series, you know that Singaporean um, culture, cuisine, is made up of um, four or five official races. I say official because um, we have the Malays who celebrate celebrate um, Eid. We have the the, um, the Chinese who celebrate Chinese New Year. We have the Indians, various celebrations. They could celebrate Eid, they could celebrate Christmas, they could celebrate Diwali. And then we have the Eurasians who traditionally celebrate Christmas. Now all these events, as you know, are public holidays in Singapore. I've mentioned them before. Now let's talk, let's talk about the Eurasians. Um, and then I promise I'll get to cooking. Um, the Eurasians make up a very small portion of the Singaporeans, uh, of the population in Singapore. Traditionally, when you think Eurasian, you think of, of the um, British Raj days because we were um, part of the Commonwealth, the British Commonwealth. And, and with the, the, the Brits, the, the intermarriages with the Brits, you had that sort of 50 50. But when it comes to Eurasian food in Singapore, Stereotypical, that's not quite a nice word, but essentially that's the direction I'm heading. When we think Eurasian food in Singapore, we tend to think Eurasian food with Portuguese influence. And it came from Malacca in Malaysia in the 16th century when it was colonized by the Portuguese and then the Dutch. And we have all these influences. Um, the Portuguese had uh, got married to the locals and, and so you have um, local cuisine with European influences like Worcestershire sauce, um, um, even vinegar, and um, and you have European dishes with local cuisines like tonight's recipe. Now the recipe itself is easy. We all know how to cook stews, right? But it's what goes in there that I wanted to talk to you about. Now, oh hi, we've got uh, Chef Benjamin has just joined us. Hi Ben, say hello. Good evening, how are you all? So I'm a little late. Love, love, <laughs> love the hair, Ben. Poor thanks. It's been manic all day. <laughs> You've been baking today, haven't you? Uh, I've been baking yesterday um, with my daughter. So um, yeah, it's been a little bit of fun. Cool, and we're gonna we're going to see the product of this this um endeavor, yeah. aren't we? I've already posted it on my profile, but um yeah, I'll, I'll share a, a slice of cake with you soon. Cool, excellent. I'm going to go over to AJ and ask her. AJ lives in Australia. AJ, how familiar are you with Eurasian food? Oh, uh, well, Australia is just a mess. It's a melting pot of, of, of every culture. As in, so, you know, we, we probably 
Oh, I don't know. It's all fusion, so, you know, probably fairly familiar because they're always throwing bits of sort of Anglo into whatever they're cooking. Mm. Okay. And, Perry, what about you? You've lived in the U.S. for quite a while, and, and where you were in, was it in Dallas? You said there was quite a huge Indian community. There must have been a mish, mish, mishmash. Is that the right word? Yes, that's the right word. And you could apply it more to San Francisco than you could to Dallas, actually, <laughs> because here you find every cuisine, and uh, it's such a melting pot of cuisines, and everyone's kind of experimenting, kind of bringing their own cuisine in. But while we are on Eurasian, actually, India has a huge uh, Anglo-Indian cuisine, which yes. kind of yes. brings in the similar set of flavors that you're talking about. Yes, that's right. We we have that as well. So we we when I was talking about the British Raj earlier on, we we um, basically so we're talking about things like uh, the Maligatani soup, um, the Kedri, um, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we are we're referring to. Uh, what what the what the English brought into India and then kind of you know a cuisine got created before you knew it. Hmm. And uh, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll, I'll get back to. to uh, Chef Michael, I'll give you a chance to talk in a bit. Don't don't you worry. Right, we're gonna get no started with the cooking. We're gonna get started with the cooking. Now it's on medium high heat, and we're gonna go straight away. Um, I'm going to go through the ingredients as we as we cook them. Now, first of all, we're going to saute some onions. Oopsie, I'll try not to make too much noise. Your standard onion, garlic, ginger. Let me just get out of there. Okay. Onion, some garlic, some julienne ginger. We'll leave a little bit just for, for the topping later on. And uh, we're just going to give that a stir. So the stuff that's going in there is your um, traditional stew ingredients. Now, I mentioned earlier we're talking about Eurasian dishes with some um, Asian influences. So, rather than browning the meat, the full recipe is on the event page, by the way. You can just copy, paste into Word, and print it. Now, this is the meat that's been marinating in a whole lot of soy sauces. Now, what makes this dish stand out? It, it's, a, it's a beef stew, but We've got um, garlic and ginger, and we have got, let's go back to the top camera. This is Indonesian, kicap manis. Kicap is soy sauce and manis is sweet. This is Malaysian sweet soy sauce. So you've got sweet soy sauce, you've got dark soy sauce, and of course, what everyone is used to, <laughs> My kids had some light soy sauce for their dinner. They took it off the table and they left it over there. And what you're used to, the light soy sauce. So this is browning and burning slightly. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some um, some cinnamon. We really don't want it to burn. Some cloves. And we're going to dump the beef, the marinating beef, in there. And stir it all in. The beef has been marinating for about an hour in this, in all the soy sauces, as well as some vinegar and some salt. So we're just going to coat that. We're going to brown that ever so slightly. And we're going to add in a little bit of flour, both for the mayo reaction for the meat as well as to thicken the stew. So that's pretty easy, right? The cooking of the stew itself is, is easy. At this stage, we're going to add all our vegetables. Cut courtesy of my daughters this afternoon. Three what flavor of slave labor as I like to call it. So we're going to dump all the vegetables in there, including the tomatoes. So pretty much, in terms of ingredients resembling a normal stew, 
what you might put at this stage, we're coating all the vegetables with all the stuff in there, what you might be putting at this stage in a normal stew would be your alcohol. But all we add is a very light, preferably homemade, beef stock. As in what cut of beef are you using? I'm basically using a shoulder cut. Um, I, I can get it here, for, I think they're called chuck. I don't know what they call it there, a shoulder cut. But you know, um, it, stewing beef, basically, a cut that's suitable for stewing. Michael, what sort of cuts are suitable for stewing? We actually use uh, regular um, uh, stock beef cuts. I mean, as far as uh, ground or um, uh, something with a little bit extra texture to it so that if you're going to stew it, it will uh, slowly but surely depreciate down uh, the fatty tissues yeah. and uh, flavoring. Yeah, with all so, the gel gelatinous, uh, gelatinous bits getting into the, um, into the stew itself. Actually, um, we have ground issue, the ground definition too. Ground definition? Yes, ground. I mean, like ground beef, ground oh, texture, based, ground. Based. Okay. Same. Okay. Ben, what sort of uh, uh, beef cuts do you like to use for your stews? Um, I'm quite into shin. I quite like the shin of the the beef. Um, okay. You have to cook it long and slow, but it has got most a bit of fat in it. It's got most. Yeah. Of it. It's done a lot of work, so you you you're really sort of getting flavour out of that. That's what I find anyway. But also, you know, you can use the shoulders, you can use the necks and things like that. Um, yeah. You know, the cuts that aren't aren't so pretty, really. Yeah. To, to some extent, it's the cheaper cuts too. The cheaper cuts that are not used for steaks and so on are perfect for stews, aren't they? Yeah. Um, at this stage, what I'm going to add to this is one of my favorite ingredients for so many things is sun-dried tomato paste. Who's a fan of sun-dried tomato paste? Yeah, I, I, I like sun-dried everything and um, and whenever I'm cooking beef stewy kind of stuff, I like to add a touch of mustard because um, I think mustard just improves. Um, it's the background, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It adds, it adds that just that little bit of depth that you want. Another layer. Yeah. Perry, can you tell us, do you do um, Indian influence stews? Because you do you do? Because you you have a book out, don't you? Your cookbook. Yes. Uh, you How keep cut. Mm -hmm. Go on. Yeah, you cut off there, so I couldn't catch the whole question. Could you come again on that? Yeah. Do you do Indian influenced stews? Yes, a lot. In fact, while we all were talking, beef. Uh, the first thought that came to my mind is I should experiment a little more with uh, beef. You know, I've. What I do is I use a leg of lamb. It's just this whole, you know, I love working with lamb. And uh, when it comes to pot roasts and stews, um, I, I land up using a leg of lamb more often. And uh, I start all my stews exactly the way you started this one, with onion, ginger, and garlic, as against okay. the usual carrot, onion, and celery, which you'd see in a pot roast. So okay. that's the Indian influence, I'm guessing. OK. So the, the this, this, one, this one here is a. It's um, beef stew. Yeah, this would definitely be of, of British origin because it's beef stew. But having said that, you would find beef stew in most parts of the world. So yeah, so the Asian influences are definitely the soy sauces and the ginger and the garlic. Um, like I said, the stew itself is pretty straightforward. It's just what I wanted to show you was the Indian influences in there. And... Um, I'm just going to say a quick hello to Kim Bultman. Uh, Kim Bultman, I haven't, I haven't seen her. We haven't seen her in ages. So she says, hello, my, oh, snow and ice, and my satellite internet signal is affected by it. Um, okay, Kim's got, Kim's got a copy of the book, so I was actually curious to say, say hello to her. Um, Benjamin. Yes. Did you have any catering? and stuff going on this weekend? Um, no, I've been quite quiet at the moment. We're at a season here in um, Biarritz, so uh, it's quite nice. This is time to relax and work on new recipes, and um, then the, the end of the spring, the season really starts, and it's time to start working again. 
back to weddings and working on the land. Okay. I just um, just wanted to show you guys just one thing that I like um, doing when I can get my hands on it is any um, anyone going to identify? Oh, it's a nice bit of beef bones. Some bone marrow. I just, like to, I just like to dump them into my stews just to yeah. thicken away. That's the flavour, that's the, the thickness. Yeah, that's right. Uh, really my husband it's something hates. that we learn in France um, here. Um, they, they put a lot of uh, big stock bones in their port of foods and stuff like that, and it just really does look absolutely fantastic. It makes it makes a huge difference, doesn't it? So I, I'll just I'll just sit it in there, and then I'll just let it simmer away. So what we're going to do is we're just going to let this simmer away um, for an hour to an hour and a half, really depending on your cut of meat. And then, 30 minutes or so before your final uh, cooking is done, we're going to add potatoes to this dish. So we're going to let that cook away. Now, this stew is traditionally eaten with rice. So, but rather, it still has potatoes. So, um, it, it, it's, it's, I think it's really quite interesting that the, the whole Western and Asian um, eating habits, because in the West, everyone has potatoes, right? Yeah. And bread, and bread. Whereas, for us Asians, Barry, what do we eat it with? <laughs> Rice. But it's Rice and, dal. <laughs> and dal and vegetables. Rice, rice, and, and dal. rice. Yes, um, what's your favourite way of having stews, AJ? Um, I, if I, I'm, I'm not a great cooker of stews. Um, probably the one thing that I do cook a lot of, which I guess is stew, is I do do osso buco a lot. Mm. Because I've just got a recipe that's so simple and it's the best I've ever, ever tasted. Okay. And Michael, what's your favorite way of having stew? My favorite, uh, pretty much uh, starting out slow and low, actually, just like you're doing. But uh, I've cooked stew up to five, six hours at a low set temperature. Pretty much um, I've had lamb stew, beef stew, pork stew, you name it, I've had it at one time or another. But the biggest influence and most impressive, impressive to me is has been the Malaysian stew. The Malaysian? Yes. Mm. Malaysian what? Sorry? The you, Malaysian recipes in general as far as stew goes. Uh, okay. okay. Influences. Well, you, I guess influences is the word I was looking for. Taste, flavors. Would you be talking about the curries? Uh... Not necessarily the curries, just the overall recipes. The okay. more influences on rice and uh, stock okay. and regular recipes. Okay, cool. Now, I've got a question here from um, Virtual Photo Walkers Tokyo Live. What Photo Walkers Worldwide? That's a mouthful. Um, are all the ingredients are they Asian? Why you can't find anything like those seasonings? Okay, so now we're gonna we're going to talk soy sauces. Okay, so I showed you up close the soy sauces that we had. Now the light soy sauce that that um, we use just a dash of here that's found everywhere. The light soy sauce is what you usually use when you come when you are using a Chinese recipe, and it says soy sauce. Um, so that is just a little lighter than the Japanese soy sauce, which is the tamari. Tamari is just, you talk about light soy sauce, tamari is here. And then you have dark soy sauce. Then you have, uh, further down the road, the sweet soy sauce. So the difference is that the light soy sauce is brewed for a short period of time. So it's salty. The dark soy sauce has got just a touch of um, molasses, but not really, but it's just been brewed longer, so there's a touch of depth and sweet, just a hint of sweet. And then you have the sweet soy sauce, Indonesian, Malaysian, whatever, tons of molasses, 
or palm sugars added to it. So you end up having a deep um, 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 caramel-like flavoring taste. So um, if you can't find dark soy sauce, because I do, I do different in my Asian recipes, I do use them quite often. And I've been asked before, dark soy sauce, what's that? So if you can't find dark soy sauce, the best substitute for it is tamari. Japanese ingredients found everywhere, presumably these days? Panelists? Mm -hmm. Sorry? Yes. Japanese ingredients found yeah, quite easily everywhere these days? Yeah. So if you can't find dark soy sauce, let's go for tamari. And sweet soy sauce. If you can't find sweet soy sauce, then use some tamari and half to a teaspoon of sugar. Palm sugar, white sugar, you can't get palm sugar. Okay, um, Candy. So, um, let's go say, say, say some hello. Um, Richard Clarkson says, well, actually, why am I doing this? I'll read the, the comment. Richard Clarkson says, I cook it in a crock pot for eight hours, etc. I serve it with crusty bread and or garlic bread and some fruit. Interesting. Right. I um, might, might get the fruit thing, Aslan, because you, you say about casseroles. I'm, I'm sort of too lazy to do the onions and everything, so I just throw everything into a, a tagine. I do a lot of tagine cooking because I throw it all in, throw it in the oven, and I forget about it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there is something to be said about slow cooking, isn't, isn't there? Yes. Yeah, and you throw in the fruit with it, and then you get beautiful balance of flavors. Yeah, I'm just going to bring up a, a, a fashion comment again here. Beth Benjamin Fisher, anyway, always like your hairstyle. <laughs> there you go, Ben. A style guru. Thank you. <laughs> so, I'm just going to add everyone in the audience um, a big hello to you guys. Right, I'm just going to show you the final product. Needless to say, the stew is going to be cooking away for a long, long time. Now, what I actually wanted to say earlier on as well is this. Um, we eat our stews, you know, curries and stuff with rice, of course. So this is traditionally eaten with rice. And what's also done uh, traditionally in the old days, not many people do this, is they, that people take some biscuits or some scones, crumble it up right at the end to thicken it. Um, now, as you can see, I'm going to show you the final product here. This is what the stew looks like when it's done, when it's finished. So we've got potatoes. Now, how many potatoes you use is going to determine how thick your stew is. And how you're going to serve it is going to determine how many potatoes you use. So, how much flour you use right at the start to thicken will, again, you know, uh, depend on how many potatoes you intend to use. So, we're just going to dish it up. So, how do we eat it? We eat it with rice. But there are a million other ways to eat it. Panelists? Yeah, go on. A quick question. We're in um, Singapore food and things like that. Would you, would you eat it with dumplings? Like, you know, obviously a British stew, we'd eat it with, you know, dumplings, crusty bread, things like that. Not traditionally. Okay, do they have, like, a form of a dumpling that they would use? Um, well, you know what? 80-odd um, percent of Singaporeans are Chinese. So Chinese dumplings, wontons and all that stuff. But in this particular stew, right, a traditional way, a traditional way of doing this is actually having scones um, crumbled and even at the top. So that's kind of dumplings um, with the dumplings at the top. Biscuits, right? Biscuits at the top with your stews. Um, can you think of a stew? I can't think off the top of my head. Then British stew with, with sort of um, biscuits like forming the top, the, the, the top crust. Hmm? Yeah, you can use like you can use like drop scones, can't you, and put things like that in it. Or yeah. You can, you know, use there are lots of ale-based stews, aren't there, in the UK? So it's quite heavy stuff. You want something to sort of, you know, soak it all up, really. Neutral. Yeah, yeah, something bland, I guess. I yeah. suppose. Yeah. yeah. So, um, panelists, any questions? Any comments? Any 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 ideas? Any thoughts? I, have I, I think it looks delicious. Yeah, it looks... I had a quick question. How did that name uh, S'more get attached to this too? No one knows. 
<laughs> I've, asked, I, I've asked and I've researched. I mean, I've been cooking this dish since I was in my teens, you know. So I've asked and asked, and nobody seems to know. But it, Namal isn't in the audience today, I don't think. Now, the Sri Lankans have a s'more as well, you know, and the Indonesians have a version of this as well. Um, so, you know, it travels. The Sri Lankans is slightly different, I believe it's got coconut milk. Um, so yeah, the first so the first time I cooked to this, people were going, "What beef? Sweet beef biscuits?" Oh, you know, it's like, "No, no, no, it's not sweet." But, so, um, but no, actually, the, the French put dark chocolate to finish off a stew, so yeah, that's, that's quite fine. Well, actually, we do that quite a lot in um, chili, chili-related um, dishes here. That's 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 that is quite a common practice now, putting dark chocolate in chili-related products. Um, I find so we've got we've got the stew, we've got chopped coriander somewhere. Here we are. Let me just switch. So let me bring that there. Hang out. She doesn't like switching cameras too often. So we've got the coriander there. And then we save some fresh ginger that we're just going to top it up with. Is that camera looking fuzzy to you guys? It looks good. I know, it's good. It looks, looks great. Yeah. Oh, it's just my camera then. Um, okay, so we've got, courtesy of my daughters, some garlic dough balls there. Actually, I'll just leave them here. There we are. And all the different ways. I mean, really, this is just what we all do, right? Uh, this, this, this bread, my 11-year-old made today. So I, I begged her and begged her not to finish, finish it, so I could, I could have it for the show tonight. So there we go. <laughs> so bread, garlic dough balls because I love them, and rice, whatever rocks your boat. There we are. Anybody wants to take a snap of that, please? Yes, yeah. snap it. Oi, someone put the camera of camera app already and take a picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Well, I was on Larry's show last night. Larry had this uh, with Chef Rashida. And at the end of it all, we couldn't turn off the broadcast. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we can go off air tonight. So five minutes later, we're all going, bye, bye. Oh, looks like we're still here. So that was really funny. So um, Perry, tell us, tell us, Perry's going to be cooking next week. Tell us about your book a little. Okay. So, um... I wrote this book in uh, last year, sometime at the end of last year, and I released it in November. It's called Spice Up Your Celebration. I've had the blog running for about three years and been posting every every time the season rolls around. In the U.S., the season starts somewhere around October and then goes on all the way to December. And I had this huge collection of recipes that were completely geared towards celebrations, occasions. I love having parties. I just don't like spending too much time in the kitchen cooking. So that's where this book comes up from. So next week, from that book, I'm going to cook my fiesta chart. It's a corn and red pepper fiesta chart. Chart basically is Indian street food. And I have um, created th this little global uh, dish. It's called corn and red pepper fiesta chart. And I serve it in mini phyllo cups, you know, the, the phyllo pastry shells. You get them easily in U.S. stores. But there are many options to serve them, and I will have all those options to show you guys. And um, oh yes, and next week, uh, March 8th, also happens to be International Women's Day. So Aslan and I decided we are going to raise a toast to women everywhere. And I'm going to make my blueberry coconut water, and I've converted it into, into a margarita by adding tequila to it. But of course, we can keep it as a cooler as well. So that's what I'm going to be making next week. Oh, I'm not that excited. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm looking forward to the margarita. Say it again. What is it? Blue. What was it? Blueberry. It's blueberry. fresh blueberry. Watermelon. Uh, uh, sorry, coconut water. And I've uh, I've added tequila and made it into a margarita. Cool. Cool. Try saying it quickly. Blueberry, coconut water, margarita. <laughs> 
Um, Michael, tell us, tell us anything, anything happening in the coming weeks for you and stuff before we say before we say goodbye and round off. Uh, we're about to have a street festival here in Indianapolis in approximately two weeks. Uh, things are really breaking loose now. In March, come April and May, we'll be getting ready for the Indianapolis 500, but we do have some cooking competitions going on through various restaurants here in Indianapolis. I also am a, a chef at uh, Banker's Life Fieldhouse for Levy Restaurants, and we're just hoping to get the Pacers into the playoffs at this present time. Cool. Keep us yes. keep us informed, and you will be cooking for us at some point. At some point, aren't you? <laughs> well, I'm just learning from you right now, but I would like to be able to. Cool. Yes. And and we look and we look forward to that. And Benjamin, you've got something to share with us at the moment, besides your hairstyle. <laughs> I don't know if it's International Women's Week next week. I'm gonna yeah, do I heard that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've got some cake. Yeah. Yum. You can. Oh, that looks good. What? Wait, wait, wait. Let me let me take a photo. Okay, hang on. Let me just put this on. Okay. Up a bit. One more time. Don't move. I said, don't move. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Done. What is it? Tell us. What? What's in it? It's a. It's a blueberry cake. Um, just to to use up the the supply of blueberries in the in the freezer left over from last year. We picked so many. We've just they're still going on. So wow. uh, me and my daughter decided that anything with blueberries good. So cake seemed seemed like a good uh, option. Yeah. Did it? Did it? Oh, yum. Did it have coconut in it or? or? Coconut flakes no, or almond? No, it's, um, it's got like a muesli crust on the top. Um, it's all gluten free. Um, cool. It's all good. Oh, cool. And you're going to have a slice now? Um, I'll try not to have another one. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're going to go over to AJ. Um, let me see. Oops, AJ, I think, has just left us for a minute. But I'll just. Oh, okay. Here she is again, I think. No. The joys of. The joys of hangouts. Right, we're going to have AJ cooking for us. So Perry's cooking for us next week on the 8th of March. Um, I, I usually, AJ will be back in the third week of every month. But um, I've been banned from having a show that Sunday because not only is it my birthday, it's also Mother's Day here in the UK. So AJ will be cooking on the 22nd um, of March. Let's see if she's... Oh, you're here. Okay, AJ. There you go. Yeah, I got bounced out. I've never, that's never happened before, but I got bounced out and I'm back. <laughs> so, um, any ideas? Any ideas? Are you going to tantalize us with any any hints about what you might be cooking? Well, you're going into spring and we're in autumn, so it'll be something trans-seasonal. Trans-seasonal sounds kinky. <laughs> 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 oh dear and on that note we shall say goodbye thank you all, thank you so much to the panellists for joining us tonight and um, everybody in the audience Jamal, Kim, Yasmina uh, Yasmina says um, I'll bring this up, I'll bring the comment up looking forward to your show Perry Avari. I'm eager to learn more about Indian cooking Perry you've got something to ask her then haven't you, go on what well, about Coming, coming on when, when does she come on? <laughs> That's the question. So, Yasmina, here we are officially asking you, would you like to come on on the panel? You know, were we supposed to do this secretly? I can't talk anymore. Anyway, so, um, one more comment, again from Yasmina, lovely cake. Oh, Jamal says, That's why I admire all women. Mm -hmm. And Richard Carson oh. celebrates his birthday on the first day of spring. Although, mm -hmm. in our house, we have been celebrating spring has sprung today. So, it is the 1st of March after all. Thank you all, once again, for joining us. And um, the recipe is on the event page. And you can, it is, it is, so, it is so open to interpretation. So, put some wine in it if that's how you cook your stew. If you have any questions, I'm always around G plus for you to ask me. Hasta la vista, as they say. See you guys next week on Paris Show. Bye now.